Let's look at what XML is. XML stands for Extensive Markup Language. And over here on the left, you see that I have an uh, XML file that I've created um, and typed out. And this is what it looks like. This is It's basically a text file used to mark up structure and store your data. Um, it enables you to transfer data from one application to the next, so it's very versatile. It's similar, if you look at it, in appearance to HTML, but unlike HTML, it's not used to display data. It's primarily used to store and carry your data from one application to the next. XML has no tags of its own. These, uh, these tags are tags that the writer of this XML document created as they were writing it. Um, there's no predefined, you know, like in HTML, you have predefined div tags, paragraph tags, header tags. There's none of that in XML. You're the creator of whatever the tags are, and you structure and store your data accordingly. Uh, the tags should be descriptive. Though there are not many rules, there are some. And one rule is the tags you create should describe the content they hold. So here you have an age tag. It describes the age of that child. The tag and XML specification. For example, in this mockup, you can see each name tag holds a child's name. So child's name here is Logan. Gender is female. Each tag holds the content it describes. Your XML tag tags need to adhere to the rules of XML specification. And a lot of people want to know and ask, what is the XML expectation? Well, if you look over here on the left on this, um, this document here, this is an example of an XML um, specification. It's basically, it dis it's, it's the display destructions you lay out in a different type of document called the XSL document. And this is an example of the XSL document. This, this um, tells the brow this tells how to display your document. XSL stands for Extensible Style Sheet Language. It's a style sheet that tells how to style your XML. It's, um, specifies to the browser how XML documents should be displayed and because your browser doesn't know you have to tell your browser how how your X how your particular XML document creation should be displayed so um, you write up an XSL sheet and again it's fairly easy to write if you just look at it it's you know it's pretty easy to write if you're looking at this we and the reason the purpose of it is the browser just doesn't know to, how to display your tags that you created. Uh, there's no standard for your creation. It's just something you created on the fly, and that's the you have to that's the purpose of writing an XSL document. It's to tell the browser how I've got this XML document. This is how I want the you the browser to display it, and. Um, for that particular XSL document, I mean XML document that I created. So you as the creator, you have to instruct the browser how to display the content. You do that with XSL. In a later video, we'll explore XSL in a little more detail, but I just wanted to give you a basics of it. Um, there's one more topic I want to talk, talk about in this video, and it's um, your platform your available platform options for writing XML. XML, like I said, is basically a text file. And so you can use any text um, program to write it. Um, you could use Word, but I don't recommend using Word. I don't like Word for that kind of function because Word has, when you type in Word, it has um, coding in the background of what you're typing. So um, in other words, if you took, if you wrote a document in Word and copied it and pasted it into um, Dreamweaver, you would see on the code, on the code background, you would see the actual code that um, Microsoft Word creates, and you don't want to do that with your XML stuff. So you don't want any of that extra clutter. I, if you don't have anything, I would use Notepad. But there's certainly um, XML editors out there. You can Google them, and I would just use that as my query XML editor. And there's there's a lot of them out there that are free. Um, there's um, some 
that will actually give you added benefits like they might or features they might validate as you type which is kind of a nice feature um, I prefer Dreamweaver be because I use Dreamweaver on a daily basis I've always got it open generally and it's just a quick tool for me to go to plus I'm I'm familiar with the interface um, I do not recommend that you buy Dreamweaver for just writing XML but um, I like it because as you write it will give you hints of what your tags are now even though you've created these tags Dreamweaver as you're as you're creating them Dreamweaver is storing them on this pop-up box and this pop-up box comes up I don't make type anything to make this pop-up box come up especially I just am starting to type about my tags and Dreamweaver is recognizing oh she's trying to make another tag let's give her the hint and as soon as I type that um, keystroke that pops up and so as soon as I put that forward that uh, greater than or less than sign whatever that is um, there this automatically pops up I don't type anything to make that pop up it just does that um, so that's kind of a nice feature especially if you've got a big XML document um, the other thing I like about it is see like how that's out of is not indented correctly if you go down here and, 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 and a lot of times on a big XML document you have stuff that's just all over the place because it's not um, always easy to do indent every time you're typing um, if you go down here to this little icon all you have to do is click it one time and it puts everything in it does all the alignment for you and indentions for you and that's really nice it also does that in HTML which I use a lot because you're constantly changing coding and flipping stuff around so I like that um, the other thing I like is to, oh, to create it it gives you a startup page here you can go right here uh, blank page XML right here in the left and then hit create down here in the bottom right and it will give you a blank XML document with your predefined you know the first line already in, in here that's telling the browser what version of XML you're um, using and that's a required uh, line and it types that for you and then as you type um, you get your hints so I really really like it um, be sure to follow me on my next videos I'm going to continue this study and um, I'm going to do them in little snippets so that it's not so much information at once and you can study as you learn um, the book that I am writing these notes off of is called Visual Quick Start Guide XML Second Edition. Here's the title. This is a book. I actually bought the book. But if you Google XML Second Edition, you will see out there on Google uh, that there's a PDF version, and that's what this is. Um, and you can follow along here. You can buy the book. The book's fairly cheap um, you can buy it on Amazon fairly cheap I'll try and put a link up for it but um, it's a good book it's not an in-depth book of all the vastness of XML um, but it's the basics of S XML it does not go into the um, it does not teach like SAX or OPML or XML RPC or PHP or JavaScript um, or the other in-depth stuff that XML goes into. It just te teaches the basics of the book. Um, and I'm going to do notes on my study and present them to you all in this format um, as I go through the book. So there will be little chunks of um, these videos as I progress in the uh, book. I will progress with my YouTube videos. So um, if you're studying this book, please by all means feel free to use my YouTube videos as a study tool with the book and um, I hope it helps some people out. If you subscribe to my uh, channel you will also get uh, notifications as my as I update um, with new videos on this book. Okay, thanks.